Hi, here is my iPad. It has a virtual assistant, Siri. It's just amazing. I can talk to it. It understands me and responds to every question I pose. Let's try. Hey Siri, what's my name? You're Tija. That's what you told me anyway. You're amazing. It's nice to be appreciated. You're stupid. I'm just trying to help you. Okay, play music. Change the song. Okay, pause that. Perfect. Have you ever thought how could a gadget understand what we are talking? Probably it's intelligent. But how could anyone make a machine intelligent? Let's look into its background process. It's trying to pick up whatever we are talking. Then simplifying those sentences to simple statements. Then converting it to its own decoded language. Then checking its database for answers. Finally, responding with most appropriate answer. Right? That sounds convincing. My next question is, our language English is complicated. So how would it decode that? Actually, it doesn't know how to do that. We are the one who should create a mechanism to make it understand our language English. And here comes the role of mathematical logic or simply logic. Hi, this is Krishna Teja and you're with KCS Prep. Welcome to the course Mathematical Logic. Here we're going to formulate the rules and laws required to decode our language to mathematical structures that a machine can understand. This is the backbone for machine learning. So if you are inclined towards artificial intelligence or robots, then you need to master the subject. I won't be covering everything in detail. I would just restrict myself to gate syllabus, but that will be enough to get you started with. So let's begin. I'm basically a Hyderabadi guy. So let me take a few statements about Hyderabad. Hyderabad is the capital of Telangana and it occupies 650 square kilometers along the banks of Musi River. It has an historic monument, Chaminar. Where is Chaminar? In this paragraph, if you can carefully analyze, we can split the paragraph to statements. And complex statements with connectives like and, or, if, then can be plugged out to make it simple statements. These simple statements are either correct or wrong, or sometimes we can't decide. Instead of saying correct and wrong, let me use the computer terminology true and false. In computers or machines, the statements that have a definite truth value, that's either true or false, play a significant role in decision making and logical analysis. Therefore, these statements are important when you compare to statements that are ambiguous and that don't have a specific value. And these statements are given a name. They are called propositions. So by definition, a proposition is a statement that is a fact which is either true or false but not both. Let's take the previous example on Hyderabad and let's try to identify the propositions. Hyderabad is the capital of Telangana. Yeah, this is right. So its truth value is true and therefore proposition. It occupies 650 square kilometers along the banks of Musi River. Yeah, that's correct as per your Wikipedia. So it is true and therefore this is also a proposition. It has an historic monument, Chaminar. Yes, even this is true and so proposition. Where is Chaminar? This is not a fact. It's a question and questions don't have truth values. So this is not a proposition. Let me add few more statements. Rajesh has a BMW car. This is indeed a proposition because it's definitely either true or false. But it's just that we don't know who is Rajesh and we are not aware if he has a BMW car or not. One thing is sure, the statement is either true or false, but it can't be both. Therefore, it is a proposition. Then bring my shoes. Open the door. These are imperative statements that are commands or requests for which we cannot assign any truth value. Therefore, they are not propositions. One more. 
x plus 3 equals 10. It is an open statement and it is not a proposition. Let me explain. x plus 3 equals 10. So if I take x as 2, 2 plus 3 equals 5, which is not 10. Therefore, it's becoming false for x equals 2. Suppose if I take 7, 7 plus 3, uh, that's 10, which is equal to 10, therefore true. So it's sometimes becoming false, sometimes it's becoming true, therefore not a proposition. This one is interesting. This sentence is false. What happens if I assume that this statement is true? It means that it's true that this sentence is false. Doesn't make any sense, right? Let's try with false. It's false that this sentence is false. Still senseless. This example is called a paradox and it is not a proposition because it's neither true nor false. I know this is tricky to understand. So take time and think about it. Okay, let's tabulate the classifications. Propositions are declarative facts that are either true or false, but not both. And which are not propositions are your questions, commands and requests, exclamations like yuppie, hooray, sorry, and more. And finally, open statements, uh, the statements which include the variables like x, y, z, and all. So that's all about propositions. All right, I assume that you have picked up the concept on propositions. If the statement is simple, there's nothing much to do about it. We can either find its truth value, that's either true or false, or maybe we can negate the statement. Something like, uh, it's an apple. If I negate it, it's not an apple. Let's take one more. Raghav completes his homework regularly. And if I negate it, Raghav doesn't complete his homework regularly. Australia has won the match. And if I negate it, Australia did not win the match. If you have observed, English is tricky. We use different words like not, does not, could not, etc. to convey the same meaning. To keep it simple and minimal, we shall use a standard prefix line that can do the same job. And the line is, it's not the case that followed by the statement. Let's try with these statements. If I have to negate it, I could say, it's not the case that Raghav completes his homework. Or, it's not the case that Australia has won the match. Perfect. So let me introduce the first transformational operator, negate. And this is the symbol we're going to use. Some books use the symbol something like this. And few use in algebra to represent variables, we generally use the letters x, y, z like in uh, x plus y equal 2 or x square plus y square equal 4 and many other. Similarly, in logic, to represent any random statement, we generally use the letters p, q, r, s and to represent the truth values, uh, t is used for true and f is used for false. Few books give it as 1 for true and 0 for false. So whichever is convenient for you, you can use that. To formulate the negate operation, Let's take an example. Here we have a statement P. New Delhi is the capital of India. And if I negate it, it's not the case that New Delhi is the capital of India. We humans are lazy and always need some easy tricks and shortcuts to memorize things. So for convenience, let's draw a table. And these tables are called truth tables. So here the statement is true. So P is true then it's pretty obvious this statement is false. Let's take one more example. So here is the statement. Patna is the capital of Gujarat. This is false. Patna is capital of Bihar. So please, your statement is false. And when you ne negate a negative statement, it becomes true. It's not the case that Patna is the capital of Gujarat. That's true. So if you have a statement that's true, when you negate it, it becomes false. And if a statement is false, if you negate it, it becomes true. Negation was pretty trivial. What if we had a complex statement? Let's try. 
Generally, we connect statements with connectives like and, or, if then, and many other, right? So let's start analyzing each connective. Let's begin with and. Connective and. It's represented by a symbol inverted V and it's called conjunction. Let's formulate its truth table. For admission in IITs for MTech, you should pass BTech with 60% degree and qualify gate exam. I hope you have identified the connective and. And this statement can be broken down to simple propositions. P has passed BTech with 60% degree gate and Q is qualify gate exam. And the admission criteria is P and Q. Just hold on for a second and just think about the statement. When do you think this statement will be true? It would be true if this as well as this is true. So if the statement P is true and Q is true, then definitely both together will be true. When do you think this will be false? If either this condition is not met or this condition is not met or both, if both are not met, then it will be false. So if P is true, Q is false, this will be false. And if P is false, Q is true, still false. And both are false, 100% no. They will not allow you into ID. So let's write a key statement to memorize this. Conjunction is true only when both P and Q are true. So in all other cases, whenever you find a false, then you can simply mark it false. So that was about propositions, negative statements, and the first connective and. In the next video, we'll be covering other connectives.